Hey guys, it's Justin from Outlaw European Performance, and we're back with a brand new build breakdown video. This time it's on the Outlaw E85 E60 M5 here. Before we get into everything we've done to this car, let's talk about a little history on it. We've owned this M5 for a little over a year, and when we got it, it was in rough shape. The passenger rear door was damaged. Allegedly, someone tried to break this back glass with a hammer, ended up missing and hitting right there. The hood also had damage on it, and then was attempted to be painted over. The front bumper was completely missing when we got the car. And clear coat had attempted to be repaired on the trunk and on the roof. It also had vinyl wrap, like a carbon fiber looking deal on the roof of the car. The driver's mirror was also broken from a ladder falling on it. Mechanically, it was in limp mode. Two of the OEM wheels were bent. One of the outer tie rods was bent. The control arm bushings were blown out completely. And there was absolutely zero service records with this 117,000 mile beast. So when we first test drove it, it was a couple weeks after being in an accident with our ready 60 M5, but even in limp mode, it felt like home in an E60 M5, I guess. So we did what everybody suggested we don't do, and we bought it with all of its problems. We don't have too many pictures of it in the state we got it, besides this picture of it next to a McLaren. Something else unique about this M5 are these fender decals that we've made quite the effort to preserve. The owner we got it from told us that the original owner took it to Nuremberg as part of the European delivery program through BMW, and that's where the decals came from. Looking up the VIN online didn't help us prove that, but every picture we found, these decals have been on it, so we've tried to keep them on through everything we've done to it. So anyway, we bought the car, and as soon as we got back to the shop, we fixed the limp mode issue with new coils and plugs and a pair of venous solenoids. We then took care of the steering issues with new outer tie rods. We put front lowering springs on it from Dynan. We also serviced all the fluids in the entire vehicle and fitted it with all new brake pads and got the keyless entry and comfort access working again. We ended up taking both the mirrors, both the rear doors, and all the tinted glass, along with the rear bumper off of our Ready 60 M5, and we had the whole car painted. So this satin finish is not a wrap. It's the actual paint of the car. It's the original black sapphire metallic just with the satin clear coat on it to give it the matte look. And of course, we protected the front decals during that whole process. This paint finish choice is awesome at times and horrible at others. Maintenance on it's a little bit higher than usual. You can't polish it. We have a special matte car wash that we use on it. We've been thinking quite a bit about getting the whole thing wrapped in a cool livery while we decide what to do about the paint. We weren't too impressed with the painter's work on it. Like I said, sometimes it, it looks really good. And it's definitely unique. After paint, we started the modifications. We picked up these 20 inch Vossens with Continental Extreme Contact tires. Currently it has 285 3020s in the back. We tried putting 315 35s in the back. We got them to fit, but the SMG didn't like the final drive ratio being anything other than stock. So if anyone knows who can program the SMG module to run a different rear gear ratio, definitely let us know in the comments. We'd love to switch out the rear diff to a 410. We also got it a black front splitter, a black rear spoiler, tinted the tail lights, and put some LED license plate lights in. Some other things we did do it right when we got it 
was gutting the primary cats, deleting the secondary cats, resonator and mufflers. Our other M5 has mufflers and some people called this M5 quiet when we first got it. They don't call it quiet anymore though. With it looking and sounding a lot better, we went back under the hood and took the stock 507 horsepower, five liter S85 V10, and fitted the AFE intake system on it with high flow dry filters, so it doesn't take out the mass airflow sensors. We also added Dynan graded throttle bodies, a Turner underdrive pulley, alternative performance engineering 85 kit, and we replaced the 25.5 pound injectors with 36 pound injectors. It definitely woke it up. For the tuning on it, it's got a Euro SMG tune, and then the DME has a tune from HTE Performance Tuning. We did do some more maintenance on it at this point. We did our standard rod bearing service to this motor, replacing the rod bearings with ACL Race Series bearings with extra oil clearance, replaced the high pressure Venus line, and had the Vanos pump rebuilt by Dr. Vanos. And then also at one point, the car's throttle actuators started acting up. So we replaced both throttle actuators and replaced the thermostat at the same time. Since we'd already done a bunch with the exterior and the performance and maintenance side of it, we had to do something with the interior. The car originally came with this color wood grain. When we repainted the car, we swapped it out to this color. But when we took our other M5 and swapped it out to carbon fiber, that car was originally a stainless interior car. So we took all the stainless and put it into this car. So while upgrading the interior, we put LEDs in, red ones here, for the dome lights. But if the uh, red's too much for you, we put the white LED for the reading lights. Something we do to almost all E60s and E9X cars. And then we also put the Autotechnic red M button in. If you notice, the iDrive screen is missing. There's a couple reasons for that. It's partially because race car and then also partially because the V10's all the music you need in here. We may do something about it at some point, but honestly, we have a few other things to do before that. Some of the little things we did along the way to this was fit stainless brake lines on all four corners. We also put on this black M5 emblem on the back. And we took a set of black grills that are aftermarket, obviously. Kept the aftermarket black outer piece, but then put the OEM inside grill piece in. So it's not just your typical aftermarket black grill. It's a little bit more unique and it keeps the whole black and chrome theme going. And of course our latest modification, we had the pre-LCI headlights removed and we sent them to TS Lighting and had them redone. They are definitely bright and definitely unique. On the other M5, we did the LCI conversion. One with a very like facelift OEM plus on that car. This car is definitely not that. The whole plan for it's to be a little bit extra and those lights definitely add to the extra. We have some pretty big plans for this Outlaw M5 this spring and summer. It still needs to go to the dyno, but then we're gonna take it to a few different racing events. We want to go to drag racing, roll racing, and of course, road course racing. But yeah, that's a little history and breakdown of our build on this Outlaw M5 so far. Hopefully one day it becomes our first supercharged M5. It isn't as clean or OEM plus as the other 5 and it doesn't get as much attention on social media or at car shows like the other Outlaw M5. And we have no plans of selling either, but I can say with certainty that this one isn't going anywhere. It's the first one on our t-shirts, it's the M5. 
on our intro to these videos and most days it's the m5 i picked a daily hopefully you enjoyed this video we plan to keep all you up to date with what we are doing with both cars for more day-to-day -day content follow the outlaw euro instagram and the e60 m5 outlaws instagram and as always don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so we can keep bringing you v10 powered bmw content thanks for watching Thank mm -hmm. you.